here it is, the four player X-Men multi-console cabinet. This thing is freaking sweet. Man, it was a pain in the butt, but totally worth it. Went with the four panel, uh, four player control panel from 99 Lives Arcades. Um, first time using them, excellent work. I'm pretty happy with the build. Um, she's a solid product. Uh, once I got it, you know what, uh, truth is, you could easily make one of these yourself. I expect there'd be a little bit more to it, but the way it's designed is actually very sleek and efficient. Uh, also use matte Mayhan, I believe I'm saying it right, for the marquee, the backlit marquee. He does what I believe to be the best backlit marquees in all of Arcade Wanna. Uh, fantastic guy as well, easy to work with. And then of course I used, um, Oh, I actually forget the wrap was actually an eBay uh, purchase. I forget it's a company, uh, I think out of Kentucky. For some reason, I can't think of the name of it. So my apologies there, but and just some custom accents. Um, using my Cricut there to uh, make the X-Men logo for the riser. Did some carbon fiber wrap there as well. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. Nice and sweet. And then we did reverse carbon fiber, the white carbon fiber for the Marvel logo. And also, for the retro DNA logo on the back. Just a nice little addition. As you can see, this thing has built-in sound. Mounted the speakers on the back. Uh, just like in my tutorial, we did one of the external um, power buttons. I love these things. In my opinion, it's the best way to do a power button on an arcade one-up. And there's a ton of different ways, but I just think it's sleek. I love that you can disconnect the cable, and these cables are all different sizes, so very easy to get. Then, I also printed some custom buttons with the X-Men logo here for your start buttons. So player one start and coin. Uh, went ahead and identified that that's your menu button by the mutant power sticker there as well. And then with eight buttons in player one and player two. And of course the light doesn't do the button color justice, but green and red on this side and then blue and yellow on this side. And then what you'll notice here is I actually have hidden behind this area here a sensor bar for the Wii because this is a multi-console unit. It has a Nintendo Wii at the bottom, which you can see right there. That makes it great for shooters. Uh, also, I might mention this is a modified Nintendo Wii with about 6,000 games on it as well. So not only can you play your arcade games here, but if you want to switch to uh, the wireless, you can just cut right over to your Wii uh, using this remote right here, which I'll show you in a second. And then you can simply turn your remote sideways and play your arcade games with the standard controller. Here we have a multi-input stereo amplifier. Uh, this is a big boy. This isn't, um, you know, like a lot of the smaller amplifiers we use. She's pretty heavy, but uh, two times 120 watts there. As you can see, it does have a headphone input, which is nice. You also have an aux in if you want to plug in. Uh, that way, you got some bass and treble adjustments, and then basically aux one, two, uh, and then really three. It's called CD, I don't know why, but uh, your max volume's there. And then outside of that, it's running the Pi 4, which you can see here. This 13,000 games, everything from Daphne, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, a Thomas Wave, uh, all the way through into your arcade classics. So pretty much everything from the 80s. 90s and into the 2000s. I mean, one heck of a collection, guys. There we go, all games. Oh, so 12,990 games, just short of 13,000 games. Pretty sweet menu as well. All your standard search functions. If you guys are familiar with this, jump into it by letter if you want to get to a game that starts with H. Simply select that, that'll take you down to H. Scroll sideways. This features uh, preview videos for every game. So really just the best of both worlds. What we have here is the infrared sensor as well. Uh, that's where you change it by remote. So basically to change it, you got your one, two, and three. Uh, one is the Pi 4. Then I'm gonna hit that. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna switch right on over. Takes just a second to your Nintendo Wii, as you can see there, as you can see there. And of course, I got some uh, some gun uh, motes, but I have some gun holders for the uh, Wii Mote because uh, the main purpose of this is shooters, of course. Um, and then basically, right here, we'll just switch it over to Aux 2, and boom, there you go. And then, like I said, this is a modified Wii, which is actually a surprise for the client. He's not expecting this, but 
I've got your Atari 78, Nintendo 64, Nintendo, Game Boy, Sega, Super Nintendo games, all right there on the Wii as well. So, you know, you do your Wii functions like so, and then you simply turn it sideways, go in there, and boom, you can play your, your games that way. All right, guys, just a quick look inside. Got the infrared receiver right there. On the inside, we got the 19-inch Lenovo monitor. We actually cut it into the original Arcade 1-Up monitor framework there nice snug fit taped it in real good got the led adjuster right there of course your pi 4 your amplifier up front got the speakers mounted on the back here got my multi switcher here three hdmi ports on that bad boy and then just cable management kind of all put together you see uh your encoders i keep one and two hanging down in the front for easy access and then everything's kind of a rat's nest at the bottom, but I like to run uh, through just a couple holes there at the top. So everything's easily accessible on the top end, but you don't have to so much look at everything on the bottom. And then of course the power switch, uh, which I have a tutorial for in another video here on the channel. Game of the day. And today's game of the day is Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, an absolute classic fighting game. Who doesn't love kicking ass with Chun-Li, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Ryu, the list goes on. Capcom has made some incredible fighting games. This is among the top of the list, and it's going to be featured on an upcoming arcade one-up cabinet. So, of course, I had to make a mention of it. It's a ton of fun here. You can see my daughter uh, straight kicking some butt here with Ken, and uh, it's just a blast to play. I highly recommend the game. If you don't have it, you need to get it. It is a must for any collection. Definitely up there in the realm of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. I think a lot of people would probably put Marvel vs. Capcom 2 ahead of this particular game, but I do love this game. I love what it has to offer. It's got great gameplay. Everything runs very smoothly, and it's one of those games where you can really learn the configurations quite quickly. All right, guys, the beer of the day today is the American Pilsner by the Grand Canyon Brewing Company. Pretty excited to try this one out. Its claims are that it's malty and crispy, which seems like a unique combination. It is a veteran-owned company, and being a veteran myself, 17 years in the United States Air Force, I can tell you right now, this is a military uh, veteran company that I absolutely support. So let's give it a try here. What are you playing back there, Trent? Jetpack Joyride. If you don't know about it, check it out. It's a ton of fun. It's an app you can get on your mobile. I'm going to tell you right now, this is smooth. So it is multi. And it does have a tad bit of crisp as well. I think it's actually a very flavorful beer. Shout out to them. I've never had it before. Grand Canyon Brewing Company, the American Pilsner. Give it a shot. All right, guys, that is it. Hope you enjoyed the X-Men cab. This thing was a ton of fun to build. I highly recommend doing these combo cabs, getting your Pi 4 and something like a Nintendo Wii working in the same cabinet. It was a ton of fun to build. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and share this video. Happy gaming to you guys.